What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to walk y'all through my LinkedIn profile. Everything I put into it, who, what, when, where, and why. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, stick around. We're going to go through it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And before we get started, I'd like to ask you a quick favor. If you could smash that like button for me for the YouTube algorithm. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click the subscribe button to stay in tune with Gadget Tools Unlimited, to stay on top of the latest uh, videos that we drop and to be the first to view them, click the little bell icon, which will let you know every time a new video drops. All right, now moving forward, Today we are going to be going through my LinkedIn profile. Now, I'm by no means a LinkedIn expert or a LinkedIn profile expert. I'm just gonna walk everyone through what I do on my LinkedIn page, which is probably not enough to be quite honest, and um, how I set mine up, what's on it, what you see, and my recommendations, basically. So without further ado, we're going to open up LinkedIn here and get started. Okay, so here we are on my personal LinkedIn page. Probably the first thing you see is my banner. I created this banner myself. I recommend people create their own banners just to give their profile a personal touch. You know, this is your sensibilities artistic sensibilities or just something that speaks to what you do what you're interested in something like that right and so you see mine it says I help technology users stay productive by making sure their technology behaves and you see a little guy with the fist waving in front of the laptop I'm like you better do what you better do what you're supposed to uh, I thought that was funny anyway um, and I as you can see I got my logo right here and, and that's basically it. Now, the cover photo on your LinkedIn profile has to be a certain dimensions, right? If you just try to put anything up there, it won't fit or your picture won't look as good. It'll pixelate if it's not big enough. So uh, LinkedIn recommends a cover photo size of 1128 wide by 191 high. And these are pixels. So if you're working in Photoshop or something, you're making your background and they've got a bunch of online sites actually that you could just go create a cover photo for all the different platforms and they automatically size them. Uh, you probably have to pay for some of them though. Uh, the next thing is the cover photo or the profile photo. You also wanna have this photo, the recommended size is um, 268 by 268 square. So 268 wide by 268 high also in pixel what i did was you know I, i've got a large picture a 1080 by 720 probably and then i just cut out my head out of that picture to the size that i needed it and that way i wouldn't get any uh degradation when i was manipulating the photo it came out pretty nice i think this is my my page photo and the background now as you can see underneath that i've got my name and then my title so I'm a senior systems administrator at Dallas College here in Dallas. Over to the right, you see I also have a, a business, which is called Gadget Tools Unlimited, and I also have a business page um, on LinkedIn, and uh, I'll show that too. Moving down on the page, over here you can edit your profile URL. If you click this, it'll take you to this page. And as you can see, my profile URL is linkedin.com slash Warner Bell. You can edit this and put whatever you want in the Warner Bell spot. It'd be your name, your company name, whatever you want to put there. You could turn on and off your profile's visibility here. Uh, um, like if you wanted to rehaul it, you could turn it off, overhaul it, turn it off, fix it up, and then come back and turn it back on. Going back to the page though, Everyone knows that, you know, on the right side, it shows people who's viewed you or who you viewed, stuff like that. Right here, where it says your dashboard, 
look over here it says all star that's because i have completed my linkedin profile to 100 percent so it's completely filled out and i guess they call that all star this is not a paid pro account this is still the free linkedin account i didn't see the need for the pro account right away when i was building this page uh perhaps i'll um you know find some uh benefit in going pro later it shows you who's viewed your profile who's viewed your posts how many search appearances you've come up in and it has some other options here for you to look uh creator mode i haven't explored this yet uh, my network salary insights and my items getting down to the main part of the profile here my about section so in my about section I wanted to tell a story of who I am, right? And so that's generally what I recommend in your about section. You're gonna tell a story of who you are and how you got where you are. And if I open, if I say see more, you'll get to see my, uh, you know, what I wrote, how long it is and so on. And, you know, I'm not gonna go through right now exactly what, I'm not gonna read the uh, profile, but. I mean, feel free to go to it when you want to check out my LinkedIn profile. You can read it for yourself. Below that is your activity window, shows you what you've liked, uh, posts you made, comments you made, so on and so forth. Below that, we get to the experience. And so, as you can see here, I believe the experience goes by date. So whatever date you put, it automatically puts it in chronological order with the most recent thing first. And that's going to be uh, my business, Gadget Tools Unlimited, and I am the owner, and you can see my logo. And the reason why this logo appears here in LinkedIn next to one of my experiences is because I have a business page with that logo on it, and LinkedIn knows about it. So if I just click this, it'll take you to the Gadget Tools Unlimited page. You can see there's my uh, background, there's my logo the name posts stuff like this and so you can have this page built or linked with your actual personal linkedin profile page your your business page or company page is what they call it and as you can see it's not quite fully filled out yet need to add a custom button and that'll complete that going back to the personal profile here so then it starts with your experience my first experience is my current position right now uh, at dallas college senior systems administrator cloud collaboration team lead that is my current position all right and um below that a lot of times people are tempted to you know when they're doing the description for their uh for their position, they're just they just copy the job description that came with the job posting when they first applied or got the job, and and that's just it. And I advise against that. Maybe initially, you can put that there, but you know I would just wait until I got in the job, found out what I was doing, found out my actual job duties, and then I would put it. So as you can see here, I have tailored this to show what I'm actually doing, you know, responsible for cloud collaboration and conferencing across the college, what uh, platforms I'm responsible for, monitoring overall systems. I build this all the time. Every time I take on new responsibilities, I come in and I update these descriptions on all of these, even the, the, the ones that are uh, in the past, if I remember something that I did that I never uh, put on these, I would go back. But generally, while I'm in the position, every time I take on new responsibilities or get new skills in that position, I update my resume and my LinkedIn with what I'm currently doing in the job. And I put it in my own words. So it's not that uh, HR job description that you just paste under your job title right so that's the way i advise doing it come in edit it put it in your own words tell tell people who are looking at it exactly what you're doing right now and so then obviously under experience you've got your previous 
job first and then it goes down in chronological order back through the job postings you had previously i was a system administrator um, over enterprise applications and i put my responsibilities and time there and before that i was a system support specialist three no that was a network support specialist three uh and enterprise applications admin some responsibilities there um, PC support specialist one before that and as you can see I'm still with the same company and this is just my progression within the company since I've been here so that's one two three four five positions no, is it two three four yeah I'm in the fifth position here uh, before that Previous history, Cisco data center access engineer, roles and responsibilities. Okay, and before that, you see, uh, I was with Unisys as a Dell field engineer, and before that, tech systems technician to network operations. Below the experience section, you have the education section. And again, I'd like to encourage that um, whenever we're filling out these descriptions and, and writing these descriptions, we want to try to put them in our own words, but use industry terminology, obviously. And so I got a bachelor's of science in network operations and security from uh, Western's governor's university. And I graduated in uh, December of 20. And before that, I got an Associates of Arts in Information Technology and uh, finished that in 16. I also took some uh, classes at the local community college, Richland, uh, CCMP and Routing and Switching Information Technology coursework. Below your education is your licenses and certifications, right? And so this is where you list all of your certifications that you acquired while you're working on your um, IT career, while you're working in different positions, any, uh, any uh, coursework or college work you've uh, done that includes uh, certifications or licensing, you're gonna add those here. And so we'll just go through mine really quick here. We'll see that I'll show them all. Uh, the latest one is a level four CJIS security awareness certification. Um, there's no expiration date on it. It's not really that big of a deal. It's uh, basic security awareness. Uh, previous to that, Amazon Web Service Cloud Pack Practitioner, IT Information Library Foundation Certification or ITIL Certification, the Linux Essential Certification. All of these were exams and uh, you had to pass the exam and you were issued a certification. I've got three Cisco certifications. Um, CCNA, CCDA, and CCNA Security. All of my CONTIA certifications, the big three, A+, NET+, Security+, plus, also have Project+, plus, and Cloud Essentials. And you know, they have those stackable ones, the uh, CSIS and Operations Specialist that come along when you, when you get multiple um, CONTIA certifications. Uh, the CIW Web Foundations uh, Associate Certification, got that. HP Commercial Desktop Workstations and Notebook Certification, and two Dell uh, Client Certifications. So these are all the certifications I've got. As I progress through my career, I didn't get all these at one time. Okay, so below, once you, you know, you enter all your certifications. These are gonna go by date two chronologically. The latest is gonna show up first. Below that is skills and endorsements. <clears throat> so you can add a new skill that you picked up while you're working at your job or that you had previously. Add all your skills and then folks who come to your page and who know you or coworkers who you've worked with can endorse you for those skills. Like, yeah, I know this guy, he worked uh, for our company, he's good at networking, wireless, whatever the case may be. Uh, you can have people to endorse them. Recommendations. I always ask for recommendations when I'm leaving a position from my previous boss. And this is recently, uh, originally when I started this page, I didn't used to do that, but uh, you know, I didn't 
it hadn't occurred to me that that's another way to build out your page. And so now I make sure I ask for recommendations from anyone who I've worked with or worked for before I leave. And you don't even have to wait until you get ready to leave that position for another position. While you're in the position, you can go to your boss. If they're on LinkedIn and you've connected with them, say, hey, you know, if you get a chance, I really appreciate it if you gave me a recommendation on LinkedIn. Most people are gonna say, sure, I'll do that for you. And so um, you can see the recommendations. It doesn't have to be bosses. It could be uh, professors or well-known acquaintances, colleagues, people you've uh, networked with. Ask those people for endorsements. And uh, if they're if you're already connected to them on LinkedIn, it's really easy. You can uh, you can ask from LinkedIn. You can request an endorsement from a particular person right here. Ask for a recommendation, and then it, it'll ask you to choose who you'd like to give you that recommendation. Uh, below that, it shows accomplishments. It's just showing organizations you might belong to, projects you've been with, courses you've uh, um, taken, and you can add items to each of these sections. Generally, there's a plus button in the corner of them to add another section and fill it out while you're building out your page. Below that, you have interests, and uh, these are just some of the interests. You can put influencers, companies, groups, schools, so on and so forth. And it's going to show you things that you're following, groups that you're following, people you're following, companies you're following. Uh, and then below that, causes you care about. These are something that you're going to type in yourself. These are some of the causes I care about here. Um, it's fully editable, you just click the pencil, choose a, a sector or industry and so on, right? And that's pretty much it going through the profile, you know, like I said, do you a custom background, custom banner, get you a nice profile picture up there. Make sure you fill out your about section with kind of a story, don't just robotically put I like this using all the buzzwords and and this is what I want to do kind of tell the story of your evolution in whatever industry you're in or what you're looking to be doing it makes for a good read and it kind of uh, gets people to know you a little bit better know your personality kind of try to be active Here's some of my activity on LinkedIn. I'm, you know, I'd like to be more active than I actually am. I just am so busy. I have so many things going on all the time that it, it's a struggle to find time to come through here. But I try to make it part of the routine sometime during the morning in my day to just pop on LinkedIn and check the messages and maybe share a post or put a post up when I can that's gonna be my linkedin profile what i put on it um how it is and feel free to go and check it out on your own my url is going to be linkedin.com forward slash n i n forward slash my name warner bell and that's where you can go directly to my page and go ahead and connect with me and um you know feel free to copy anything you see on there to help you structure your LinkedIn page, uh, you know, to make it stand out from the crowd a little bit more. With that, I'm gonna bring this video to an end. I appreciate everyone coming out and, uh, you know, spending a few minutes with me talking about my LinkedIn profile. I encourage, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, to go ahead and build you one and start working on it and um, keep it updated. Please remember, Hit the like button if this content was beneficial to you and uh, uh, connect with me. Uh, subscribe if you have not. Hit the bell if you uh, would like to be notified when new videos coming out. And as always, thank you for coming out. Until the next video, peace.